The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I represent Bahamian people. I from Nassau, Bahamas, big up in town, bro. Boy, I from it on, bro. Right between West and Augusta, where them two roads meet, they call it Wilkinson Street. Manners and respect was like a sign blank check. It seems the ones that come in after quick to disrespect. You see, this life in the ghetto never easy. So many hungry days, break till it grieve me. But I doing the best I can. Trying to turn my dollar to a hundred grand. I represent the ghetto people I from Nassau, Bahamas, big up in town, bro Boy, I from in town, bro ghetto, ghetto. Don't take no back talk, no bribe or no joke If you find fire, you're definitely find smoke in town, bro Boy, I from in town, bro In town, I say upon running Good night, Bahamas and welcome to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. And it's always a pleasure to be a host on this wonderful Friday. And I hope everyone is enjoying their evening. And I hope that you go tonight and really enjoy yourself and have a wonderful time. You know, like I say, you work hard from Monday, at least from Sunday to Monday. I mean, Sunday to Friday, basically. And, you know, you are entitled. So enjoy yourself. So just when you go out, clear your head and make sure that anyone annoying, uh, refrain from them. You know, don't pay them no mind and just enjoy yourself. Okay. Uh, telephone numbers tonight on Garden Radio 96.9, uh, 323-6232, 323-6232. And you can text us, powered by BTC, at 422-GR96. And you can listen in on 969 Cable Bahamas. You can listen live broadcast of the show. I'm your host, Valentino Brown, host of the talk show, Inside the Inner City, that premieres every Friday at 6.30 uh, to 8 p.m., except holidays. And to each and every one of you who... I may not know personally, but for all of you who appreciate me on radio and doing a great job as you guys say I'm doing, I appreciate it and I'm encouraged and it's glad to see that people say stand out from a lot of other people in the profession. It means that I'm, I'm neutral, uh, I'm honest, I'm fair and you can have a dialogue uh, with me on this show. And most importantly, uh, I really am doing all this to better the country that I live in so that the future generation that is upcoming uh, in the next future, I'm talking about in the primary school, and they're going to go to junior school, and they're going to go to senior school. You know, They're the ones who are going to take the reins and propel this country forward. As for us who are the leaders in different areas, some of us teachers, some of us doctors, some of us lawyers, some of us are parents, you know, some of us are just guardians and and we all are driving that next generation in the right dire- in the right direction. And one thing uh, we have to keep in mind is that the work never ends. And I would like to congratulate all of the community activists, all of the persons who take the time out to really pay attention to the kids, those who take time to teach the teachings of the Bible the right way. And what the right way is meaning is that, you know, you have to go in the forward, have an open heart to show kindness and love and compassion and willing to feel those poisons pain and be able to assist knowing the pain and struggle they are going through. So I want to thank each and every one of you in all different professions, different fields of giving back. Thank you very much. 
Today's show, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, there was a little uproar lately in the news, uh, the social media concerning a very important matter. Uh, just recently, you know, the Ministry of Education, uh, Minister, Minister Lannis Hannah Martin, who I highly respect, I think that she's been doing a phenomenal job for the last 15, 20 years, sitting as an MP for the great constituency that she presents. Not only that, she's been a very outspoken person concerning in matters across the country, she's been responsible when she was the aviation minister for actually, you know, negotiating for our airspace on behalf of the government. Not knowing to many of us, you know, we might not notice, but she has made great contribution in making that come to fruition. In fact, now we are again paid from uh, aviation from the United States and other places who are using our airspace as a way of quicker travel, borrowing less fuel. So, yeah, she is a phenomenon uh, MP who has contributed greatly. She is now elected again, I think it's the third or fourth time for the great constituency of Anglestan. And she now is the Minister of Education. She previously stated uh, after the general election when she was able to become Minister of Education, there were a lot of kids not partaking in the virtual uh, learning classes that were being presented by the Ministry of Education. And in doing so, uh, as becoming minister, she saw that there were a lot of absentees and according to statistics from the Ministry of Education, uh, they indicated that you know many students were failing uh, and of fall back years because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which took away, I think, two years of studies. So many of those kids lost interest, who didn't lost interest, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, was doing what a what a kid what kid what a kid not supposed to do, but they were basically many of these kids were basically taking care of themselves, you know, because they were on the streets, you know, they was not taking a virtual virtual reality class, virtual reality classes from the Ministry of Education that was, you know, on the iPads and, you know, free Wi-Fi zones. And, you know, many of these kids were just surviving. And it strikes me that it's such an uproar in the country that the ministry, you know, has a program that they have get monitors. I mean, you know, poisons like what the Ministry of Environment and the Office of the Prime Minister hired to monitor the streets for dialect vehicles, abandoned houses, and, and, and garbage collection, and bulk waste. So, same similar system. They hired monitors who would go uh, to the inner city communities and the Bahamas at large to find these absentee kids, you know, who are missing school, and find out why they're not attending school. Well, that's a simple answer to that. Uh, Everyone poor, and that's the end of the story, okay? And school don't motivate these kids nowadays because they are so distracted by the, the atmosphere of their community. You know, they're becoming more, more uh, growing up faster than them, becoming kids and growing in steps. You know, you, 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 you child first. Then you, you, you grow to be a teenager. You know, that's about, well, I think about 10 years. I mean, you, you, 13, and you go like seven years. I mean, to 18, 19. Yeah, I think the 19, about eight, nine years. And then you become a young female or a young man. So you mature. And in between there, you're supposed to have the proper guidance to make you a decent human being, to make you a respectful human being. You know, to make, to make you an intelligent person to read and write and to know that when you go to a the application form, you had a proper education, you know. And many of the kids, them, uh, are not interested in that because school doesn't present 
none for the kids besides maths and English, you know? So in being the person she is, she, I guess the ministry formed this task force. It's more like, you know, monitor. It's more like throwing officers just being reintroduced with a different name. And they've been, and they've been looking for kids. And they, were, they say they were shocked to find a 12-year-old student uh, living in a car. You know, they're 12 years old. And we wonder why we have teenage pregnancy. We wonder why we have so many young boys going to boys' industrial school or the Simpson Pen. We wonder why so many young boys are going to prison from the age of 13, 14, 15, I mean, the boys in that show, some go to prison around 15, 16, some even go 14, you know, and you're wondering why. Why? Why? The reason why is because it seems to me that the people who govern this country, for some strange reason, they just forget. They just forget that the progressive liberal party, right, and the free national movement, but especially the Progressive Liberal Party, members who have the opportunity to be a candidate and then if they're successful in the general election to become a member of parliament, it's a great honor and privilege to hold those positions. Why was the party formed? So what it was formed, for, according to my knowledge, what it was formed for, it was formed because we wanted to give the average Bahamian people an opportunity, hey, to have a square deal in this land, a square deal. Okay, that's what the Progressive Liberal Party was formed for, and in that square deal, it means land, it means empowerment, it means that when this party that was formed for the people, by the people, the core agenda of this party was to make sure that everyone get a square deal. Mr. Carlos Reyes was on the show a few weeks ago, and he talked about if you don't have land. My cousin speaks on this. If you don't have land, be means don't own nothing. Okay? It's true. If you don't own land, you don't own nothing. You can imagine you know, with the high prices of, of items in the shop, $100 a day, now in the food store, is $20. $20 a day is basically $2. You understand? That's, the, how, that's how the money value has gone uh, down. I mean, when it comes to spending, like buying lumber and buying grocery items. Okay, $50 a day. It's like $20 when someone gives to you because that's how expensive teens is. Okay? So they found this 12-year-old. Now we see in the newspaper, we heard something from the minister, minister, Mr. Glenna Santa Martin, speak on it. And, you know, sadly, you know, she said that, I mean, she, she was shocked. But there's nothing to be shocked about, Ms. Glenn Adelman, because we have hundreds of kids and thousands of kids who have been like that for the last 30 to 35 years in this country. You know, we always forget, you know, like this is an eye opener. All right? As the government speaks on how in the last 15, 20 years under this administration, how they have tackled unemployment. Uh, according to the statistics that the government gave, they were saying that the statistics, you know, in the last, under this term, is the lowest in the history of the country. While I would agree on the government behalf, based on looking at the statistics from the previous government, they probably could look at it and say, you know what, we, we increase unemployment or we, we, or, we or we decrease unemployment in the country. That might look good on the government's behalf for them to speak that, you know. 
But on average in this country, uh, like I'm going to tell each and every one of you, I think they say that about how much percent on uh, uh, unemployed, I can't really remember, but I know it was like uh, 33 or 43 percent or something like that. I don't know how much Bahamians be, be living in the country. You know, it could be anywhere uh, between 400, 500,000, 600,000, I can't say, 700,000, you know, because you can't get a definite exact count of every and like every individual in the country. It's impossible. It's a lie. You know, there's no one in the world who could go in America and say how much people are in America. It's a lie. No one could go and look at the sea and say, look here, there's a million fish in the sea, you know, because there'd be a million and two fish in the sea, okay? That's a lie. There's no way uh, a nation can wipe out a whole entire race of people. That's a lie. People always find a way to migrate. You understand? Yeah. So, getting back to the 12-year-old, when we take a look at it, many of these kids don't come from a family oriented home. There are many reasons this 12-year-old was sleeping in the sky now. Maybe he disobedient to his grandparents or to his mom or to his dad, where he is completely unruly, where they talk to him so much and they try to get him to do the right thing, you know, with the, with, with, with the little they get, they try to provide for him. And he is unable to respond. And based on some of the stuff that you see happening in the communities where well, fathers and sons, I mean, sons are actually being very disrespectful to their fathers. Daughters being very disrespectful to their mother. You know, words like telling them about they being under this, and sons telling their daddy about that. Thing I'm worried and, mother, and daughters telling their daughters about daughters telling their mother about their you know private part and then the mother get it agitated and she started telling her daughter about a private part and fathers and sons back and forth and this is what our society is breeding today and it's hard to believe hearing it come from our political leaders in the country you know saying that they are shocked uh, that they see a 12 year old in a abandoned car where you all been living the last 40, 50 years in this country. Huh? Each and every candidate who are part of this political party, where the PL be on their for them. I know that you're part of eternity. You know, you are doctorate, you're doctoring into this political party. I have nothing against political party. In fact, if I tell you the truth, I believe that democracy, there's nothing wrong with democracy. I believe that the people who inherit democracy based on their actions and how they respond to holding power, how they hold malice, how they hold jealousy, how to respond to people who, you know, they could be petty-minded. You could be a prime minister, but you could be very petty-minded. You could, be, you know, and you could have the, 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 the staff around you and the people connected to you to do the right thing for the country, you know, to come up with great programs. But there are a lot of spiteful people who hold power, you know, they get power and they believe they better than everyone, you know. And if you hold power, right, and the Bible tells you when you're powerful, you'll be merciful. There's a reason for that. You understand? Because getting rich is a blessing for the Father, you know. But well, understand this. Some people earn their riches, but they were chosen. And you know what they're chosen to earn these riches to do? They help others. You know, some, you know, that's their duty. They help others because they were blessed. And when they get to the top of their uh, careers or get to be very successful, most of them give back to the less fortunate and help bring up others. And they, they're not trickle down and not keep on manifesting, you know, in our country today, you know, kids roam the streets like that at the age of 12, on the streets of Nassau right now, and they could get nothing but school whatsoever. You understand? 
while the program is good, and I'm not knocking on it because we need to have a mechanism in place to go and look for these kids, right? I see they're starting a food program in the school, which I, which I think is a very good thing. But also I think they need to add more curricular activities. You know, I watched on Facebook the other day, I think it was CC Sweden or Government High, I can't remember the uniform, but they was doing electronics, you know, and the excitement on the young students' face, you know, the young boys' face, they were doing electrical, you know, and the excitement on their face, seeing it on Facebook, is what excites them because now they're using their hands and their minds and they listen to the instructor and he's telling them, you know, this positive, this negative, you know, and you could see how they was intrigued by it. And what we need to understand now is that that English, that maths and stuff, that is all good, okay? But we need trades being introduced back in school, hair braiding. We need barbering. We need a uh, phone technician and fixing all these TV and, you know, we need algae culture to be introduced in school. We need fisheries to be teach in school, you know. We need uh, uh, what you call uh, TikTok where students can have a great idea and then someone can fund them. And then, you know, by funding them, whatever trade they're in, you know, they'd back it and help them start off their own small business, right? So we need to introduce small business in school. That's why I say barbering and cosmetology and stuff like that. Because many of these kids, when they go to school, the statistics state by the Ministry of Education, it states that, you know, it states that in the last two years after COVID-19, the kids, them, uh, academics uh, decrease, you know, and they showed their grades, I think, a few months ago, which was not good at all. So it means that the education we're teaching the kids in the school will benefit. It will be very benefit. It will it will be very beneficial to a lot of students. But if we want to have overall success, to get these at art- risk kids who are being abused, you know, because I'm going to get back to that. Many reasons why. Okay. Uh, If we introduce programs like fishing in the school right now, and kids learn at a young age, and then as they start to grow, you know, we have fishing programs. You know, they had a program where the Dominican Republic boats were confiscated by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and these boats were in good condition. And they were thinking about using some of the boats to actually start some programs with, with, with the schools. And that'd be a great thing because there's millions of dollars can be created through fisheries, okay? And fish oil is really good for the human body, you know? Uh, according to what they were saying about the so-called COVID-19, uh, if you want to not uh, be more protected from it, they said that you'd have to eat healthy. And they said that COVID, COVID-19 would attack the immune system, which is in the stomach. So that means what you eat determines how you would catch that uh, false disease. I mean, it was there, but you know, we found out that it was an outrageous, uh, uh, what you call, panic for no particular reason. It was it was some design to put the World Health Organization in charge of all of the countries that under that are under its jurisdiction. Yeah. But they tell you say, eating healthy, watermelon, pineapple, drinking some sour soft tea, drinking some uh canep leaf tea. Drinking some fever grass, eating a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, tomatoes, cabbage, and all this stuff would build up your immune system. In fact, 
if you're diabetic, this is the food that they suggest to you instead of eating red meat. So it comes down to eating healthy, right? Uh, we have 700 islands, 700 keys. Based on the history that I, that I was reading back on the Bahamas, we had many uh, factories over here selling a lot of canned goods. We need to reinvent the wheel again. We had beets, we had corn, we had all this stuff. Venus, you know, black eyed peas, you know, all this stuff. You know. So, you know, teaching algae culture right in the family islands, and then encouraging some of the students, you know, why is they young, and you're showing them how to grow. And then when they reach a certain stage in school, you know, when they reach reaching teenagers and getting ready to re graduate, uh, if there's a grand program, grant them the program, guide them on how, you know, to manage. You know, they don't have some information, they don't have some knowledge based on the time they were studying, because, you know, there's something they fall in love with. They're not good in maths and English and et cetera, but they could read and write. But they're great at farming. They're great at algae culture. They're great at doing nails. You know, the females are, are good. They're great at breeding here. So that's a business that can be sustained throughout their lives as long as they're dedicated to having a great uh, clientele. They, they have a great personality with their clientele, you know, that could be uh, a career that can sustain them, you know, to have a better life in the country and be over the minimum wage. Because the person who could braid here, if they have a nice shop, you know, they went to school, they graduate, you know, uh, they get a sniping, start off their business with at least five, ten thousand dollars. You direct them how the money management, how the money manage. You direct them how to go to the bank and set up your bank account, your debit card, you know, teach them what profit, you know, teach them the basic, you know, how to save, you know, and how to contain, I mean, to continue your business and make it even better. Because like I said, a person who breeds here uh, can make, or the one customer can make anywhere from 40 to $150. It depends on if this particular bread, see our lady, is reasonable, you know. See, having a business is one thing, right? Being expensive is one thing. Uh, having respect for your customers is the next thing, you know. And having a heart is the next thing because, you know, you might get charge somebody $80 to, or $100 to do the hair. But you say, no, man, you done been to me and you always come to me. You know, I do it for you for 70 or or eighty dollars. And then that person will recommend someone else to you. And that's that someone else will recommend somebody else to you. And what that does to you, you know, by you being respectful and honest to them and treating them fair, what it does to you now, if you bred one person here and you make like eighty dollars, I mean sixty sixty dollars, right? But you have poisons who go there and say, Wow, she does it nice. Uh, they ain't, she ain't expensive, you know. And then in your little bread sh shop, you know, you get your little nails you're selling. You get your little water. You get your little wigs and, you know, your little eyelashes and stuff in the store. So when the girls them come, you know, you you high tech. You know, even though this a little small store as big as the Guardian, you get AC, you know. You take this, you take this poison on you understand? You get your environment clean outside on the side of your place where you live. You get that clean. You gain somebody a couple of dollars to clean that every day. You get your garbage collected on time. You get your rat poison down to make sure that no rat uh, come around your establishment, you know, because you want people coming in your place. You know, you see a little yard down the road with a little dirty where, where people could park their car. So you go there and you clean that. So you get a little spot clean up because you're making money. So now you get about 10 people or 15 people coming to you in a week time. You're making over 1,000. And then if you continue to grow and you know one of your friends who you graduated with or you teach your daughter 
how to do nails. She could be right now. So when them girls get in the hair braid, your daughter there or your sister there, and she doing the nails, so you get someone else employed. And that's a creative creativity that we're going to have to encourage in our students. Because these 12 year olds and 13 year old and 14 year old, many of them are not interested in school. So why I say going to school is great because the parents, who want to see speaking. If it wasn't for school, the Bahamas education system saves so many parents from stress. You know, having those children in school, you know, it's time consuming, it's exhausting. You know, and many of you know this. Most of us send our kids to school, right? And when we send them to school, we breathe a sign of relief. But when you, bring, when you breathe a sign of relief, remember that these kids go in the hand of teachers. And if you, the parents, are breathing a sign of relief, so what the teachers are going to breathe in school, and we could see some of, the, some of the students are very disrespectful uh, to the teachers. So I just want to remember we have the, have the utmost respect for the teachers, you know, and I want, also want to say to the teachers, you know, you know, some of you ought to be very tired, you know. So sometimes you get over the character. So I just want to encourage you that even though you might have a bad day, you know, try your best to not go out of character. I say, no, you get your own poison in life and there's a lot of stuff going on in your life and sometimes, you know, you're tired of this particular student because this particular student is completely uh, it's this, this disruptive, telling them to be quiet. They don't want to be quiet. So you have to get physical with them. When you get physical with them, they want to restrain and try to fight back and throw a blow and then, you know, the teacher might have to, you know, and then it's a big thing with the parents, you know, because all it starts from home and in the community. And this child learned that from the community and then it was passed on into the home because the child lives in this community. And when they walk these streets, they see uh, fighting, they see cursing, you know, they're in a single, single one-room home. Why stay mom and dad, you know, doing the hanky-panky. Uh, the children, them, you know, is right there. Laying down on the side, in this one bedroom and they're seeing what their parents are doing. They're seeing multiple partners from mom. Not that mom is a bad person, just that mom can't make the right decision. And, 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 the, and the guys who she getting are, are the guys that would have would presented, you know, to her, you know, because a lot of the guys in the country, they don't have no future, you know. Right now, there are thousands of young men on the streets in National Rick. Now I saw no problems right now on the streets, and they don't know where they're headed. They don't know what career they want. They don't know what kind of work they want to do. They don't know where they want to go. That's how serious it is in the country. That to have your old is just an indication of what's to come in the near future. So when you are political member of a political party, you have a great responsibility when you become a member of parliament, and especially for the progressive liberal party. Now listen to me closely. You have an opportunity when you get elected from God to make a difference in the lives of that 12-year-old and there are thousands of 12 year old in this country and go younger that needs your all help and commitment. Holding a government position is a prestige and I'm gonna say this to you. I don't know if this Bahamas is supposed to be a Christian nation, but if it is, right? If it is, do you think that what's happening in our country right now 
in this small country. Mind me voice in the United States of America. You understand? Because we are a thousand times smaller. I mean, not put together, but you know, we separated 700 dollars and 700 keys in all landmass go over But I remember the landmass means we could fit in America, like Andres and Cat Island could fit in America. And we wasted them. And we have the similar part as them. America is a system where they are the richest country in the world. They are one of the strongest military in the world. They had, they had the strongest military in the world, but now they look like they seem to be losing that. They had the world in, the, in their hands. And they have poverty, homeless people living on their streets, New York, Miami, Florida, but I, but it's one of, but is but is the richest country in the world. But all that money is spent on is military weapons. Instead of spending it on homes, instead of spending it on uh, 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 empowering people, healthcare, using the trillions. They spend to build tanks, warplanes. One, I think it's F-16, right? Jet. Cost close to over 100 million. And there are newer jets now. Would cost one, one jet, one tank, costing 10, 20 million. But one human life isn't even weight half by the price of a tank. But they spend all their money on military. And they're fighting all these wars all over the world, so they're bringing peace to people. But yet still in their own country, they have mass shooting. They have racism. They have poverty, homelessness. Okay? Where there is no point of returning for that country where it's become so corrupted that it's out of the hands of the, the government. The government can't do nothing but the gun laws in America no more. The government can't do nothing about the drugs in America. The government can't do nothing but a person who wants to commit uh, suicide and mass murder. They cannot predict these things. But the vast majority of Americans are going into food stores, churches, shooting up black people in the churches. You know, it's rare that you see a black person of color go and, and go shoot up a church or go shoot up a place where people party in, you know. But we have a black and black high killing in all the states in America. So no excuses. We, we still, but we don't do the mass shooting, like where we go and just discriminately go in a church and see black people and just open fire or see white people in open fire or go to a parade and walk around the AR-15 and if someone mess with you for some particular reason, you just pick up your gun and you shoot them and, 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 and the court would justify that so you have a right to protect yourself even though you walk on the AR-15, you know? That's a crazy list. So just like how they're the richest country in the world, the Bahamas is probably closest to them in the top five as one of the richest countries in the world. But yet still we have poverty, child abuse, homeless problems, high unemployment, right? High diabetes, okay? Cost of living is high. Children are not going to school the police in the station uh, are just, you know, man, it's crazy. I'm going to take this call. Court caller, you're on Inside in the City on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Court caller, you're on Inside in the City on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Good night. I think we're talking about So, yes. 
we get excited. All politicians should know. Getting elected. This what the problem is. Stop coming on the news when you're seeing a little Archer, little Marco Archer, lose his life to a sexual predator. And then we come, ooh, Marco Archer. I feel sorry for the young man. Or the little girl, Bella, who got abused from her stepdad and her mom. We got a whole hysterical. Then we forget about it. Huh? All politicians know that as long as we have high un unemployment in the country, we are not doing a good job. All politicians know if we average 100 murders per year, that the job has just begun. All politicians know that when you look on the news and you see people sleeping in the car and people coming on the news, on, on eyewitness news, on Guardian Radio, and they're saying, you know, that I just get paid, you know, and the young lady stay, I just get paid but three something. And when I pay my light bill, my water bill, I leave a $10. Each and every one of you politicians on the PLP and the FNM and all of these maternities notice. Why y'all don't do something about it and stop making about party? All I look on the social media the other day, you had this old man, you know, no disrespect. He, on social media, coming right now to you, call up. I guess this is the PLP convention. There's a big ruckus going on on social media a few days ago for the by-election. Uh, it was about Shane Gibson and this Cartwright or whatever. I think Cartwright guy, what's it? Right? And one saying is Fred Mitchell uh, boy. And they're saying that their choice is Shane Gibson. And they're supposed to be PLP. All these people just want power. So, I guess the board chose, uh, I think, God, right? I can't remember. Whatever guy name is. I don't really pay these stuff no mind, but I have to be a professional. I get it right in front of me. Uh, but anyway, yeah. They want Shane. Uh, Shane uh, was denied. And his party... Clothes, no disrespect to them. Or, no, 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 no disrespect to them. It's their action. It was on social media. And I thought it's supposed to be where there's a democracy where, you know, where, when you vote, the body accepts it. So anyway, it was on social media. And all you could hear, brave got to go. Brave got to go. Right? Because they ain't get their way. Because, see, they want Shane Gibson getting there because if Shane Gibson got that position, he could do some things for them. See, this is, this, this, this is why this 12-year-old is always going to be left out. Because, like I tell you, there's nothing wrong with democracy. It's those who inherit the democracy. You know, they want democracy for them. They want the riches for them. They're using democracy for them. You understand? But this 12-year-old, say, they could represent them when this party getting power. All we're going to hear again is when the next Marco Archer... And these same individuals who say they want to, but they want to attack and they want to help the BME people by being a PLP or being an FNM, they don't care less about no PLP and FNM. Some of these people just care about themselves. They don't care about the prime minister. Cause man, what make me laugh is this. Call it. Come on right now. Come on, let's say I can one second. Come on, don't, don't hang up. This one make me laugh. Brave got to go. Brave got to go. This old man must see but more than ninety. Okay. And when you hear his voice, his voice, everyone, look like he ready to die. You run, y'all. Yeah. Why, but politics. Tell you why, but politics. Instead you why, but getting your life straight. What, what, what that gonna do to brave? Y'all can't do brave nothing. Y'all think y'all nurse and going to the fish fry with Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson in superiority over, over no. Fred, uh, Fred Mitchell, Fred Mitchell over Brave Davis. We all know this. The party go with seniority. Fred Mitchell being a member of the PLP before Brave Davis. Yes, Brave Davis could be the prime minister, but seniority just like on the police force, the commissioner of police there. But there are officers who outrank him, even though he's the commissioner. But they have years over him. 
but he has, he's the commissioner. But some officers have served and do more years than the commissioner. You understand? So Fred Smith is one of the founding members of the Progressive Liberal Party. You think all the chat, but Fred got to go and Brave got to go. Who, who y'all is? You only need making noise in the market. That's why y'all quiet now. And this is the kind of stuff we got to deal with. Matters that are important to the Bahamian people are not being dealt with because these individuals don't really care about these 12 year old. They don't care about Marco Archer. They don't care about the 5,000 students coming to the school every year. The only thing they care about is for us to vote for them. They become successful. They get contracts. They take care of their family and take who they take care of. And they can leave us with this 100 murders. They can leave us with all these kids getting abused. They can leave us with the homeless them. Uh, people on, on the road, they can leave us with repeated offenders in the prison, the condition it is, you know what can happen? We just kill up everyone, kill up all of, all of us, we just kill up one another in this country and pray off one another. And every year, we could bury a hundred different set of behemoths and all of us could cry in this one, 21 by 7. Go ahead, Gola. You're on, a, you're on inside in the city on Garden Radio. Good night. Good night. And the boy's sitting there again. Okay? So, Miss Dennis Hannah Martin, I respect you, Mom. But, Mom, the work never done. Never done. We have a long way to go in this country. Okay? A long way we have to go in this country. And our political leaders will be in the F and M, our Honorable Michael Pintard, who's wanting to be the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I can't dictate if you are going to be successful or you're not going to be successful. That up to the universe and that up to the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, which I am above. You yourself, sir, I hope you're instructing those candidates who you'll be electing that things have to change in this country. We have to be able to give people grant. We have to be able to give Bahamian people land. I want to instruct the Bahamian people who have land on the family island, Freeport, Grand Bahama, Cat Island, you know. Everyone asking for this land. Let me tell you all Bahamian people something. A lot of us, Browns and all of us got land in Andres. Get your lazy hip up. You're running talking about this crown land. You understand? We are naked and being talk about so much. Crown land. Listen to me. There are so many behemoths in this country that have crown land that is on the family island that you would inherit on the family island. I'm going to get mines next year, God spell life I live. I'm going to take my father down in Andres, and I get my lazy hip, and I'm going to get my land that was given to the slave masters, to my, to the brands. Because let me just tell you, the last name you have is the slave masters who left here in the Commonwealth of Bahamas. So get your lazy self up. A lot of you here in National Province of Lyon, in Elutra, you all have Lyon in Auckland, you all have Lyon in Freeport. Many of you might not have no collateral main funds, but that can't stop you from going and claim. Go claim your land, people. Go claim your land that is your own. Go claim your name is on it. Go to the governor's office, go to the commission office on these family islands. And inquire your brown, Roald Thompson, all this stuff, and you know that your family leave your land, your great great grandmother leave your, your great granddaddy leave your land in this abaco. Go claim it. Go claim it. And turn it into something, a resort. Turn it into homes. Turn it into a company. Do something with it. We can take this call. Go ahead, call her. You're on this side, is it? How you doing? Good night. What's up? Bucky here. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. You know, about four or five times you say, call the hole, I'm coming to you now, I'm coming to you now. What's that? What's that now, Sparky? And, uh, and then the phone hang up twice, I had to call about three, three times. Boy, Sparky, you wouldn't stop you. Know. Top of the day to you. Sparky, you wouldn't stop, you wouldn't stop. No, man, you got to keep it going on. You can't just crumble like a wall, you know. You got to fight, man. Like you say, you got to go do something. Go get do something. Go get your land. We have all kind of crown. I just want to say this before I let you go, Sparky. 
Bahamians, a lot of Bahamians in this country now are in the province who rent homes right now and rent apartments and rent all this stuff. A lot of y'all, yeah, Ramens, like my cousin, Brands, Thompson, and all the last name, all y'all get land on the family island. Get your lazy self up. Ask your, ask your family members who you know. Ask them some questions. Show them some respect, and they might tell you who owned the land. And then go. This, this go is ahead. Scrooge. Scrooge, let me tell you something. It is not as easy as you say. It ain't easy to say. Not an easy in life. Money ain't ain't nothing easy, Sparky. Ain't nothing easy in life, Sparky. Ain't none of us come here with nothing. Ain't nothing easy in life. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to tell the Bahamian people, don't go. Where you can start? You need to start somewhere. Yeah, but see, I I said that you need money, but some. I'm not, not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Screws. You imagine hey, go ahead. you live in the capital where majority of the population is, where a majority of finance and the e-commerce is, is in New Providence. Mm. For you to jump on a plane to get to a family island or a boat, you need money to get there. I agree. If you ain't got no place to live, you can live on the beach. I agree. You can fly in the skeeter beach, bang up. If you're going to go clean the land, you're going to need a uh, tractor. To clean the land. I agree. You got all of this stuff, you need money. I agree. You just afford to eat. In the outer island, if you're buying some the bamboo shop for fifteen dollars, you know what it costs down in Maguana? How much? Twenty five dollars a But maybe more than that. I agree. Gas down there I agree. Eight, eight, nine dollars a gallon. I agree. But see what I'm saying, as like I say, and a lot of people must be tired of hearing me say it. I've been trying to get Crown Land right here in New Providence for Finland was in power. I finally got two acres yeah. the other day off of Gladstone Road. Okay. In twenty twenty one. Now, I've been trying to get it cleared, but the problem is to get to the land, there's what you call an off of Gladstone Road, access road to get to the farm area. Mm -hmm. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture passed it on to the Ministry of Works. Mm -hmm. This was supposed to be done from, from 2021. Mm -hmm. This is 2023. Mm -hmm. I got the document sitting right on the bed right here, uh -huh. signed by the minister and my... I, if you were to look at me, I could show you the document. Yes, sir. I, I got it on the system. I listen, I listen to some shows you talk about 2021. this. 2021. I listen to a couple of shows you talk about the same incident. Look at, look at Scrooge. They ain't do the access road yet. Mm -hmm. So last, this, this week, Tuesday, me and my mom and my tractor decided we could go across the road. Hold on. Tractor Hold on. on. Hold on. Land number 60. Hold on. Hold on. All them things you said just now, right? You were able to do. You get your truck. Why? You say government. You notice what you said? You say you and your friend get the truck and y'all don't. So that's the little encouragement I'm giving right there, you know? But you see what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, sir. All the rest of the farmers around there, they're still waiting on the government to do the access road. Yeah. So their land's sitting there. Mm -hmm. Me and my man, who's already been paid, he decided to get his tractor. Yes, sir. Down there, he says, Sparky. You and him, you, you and him, you and what? You and him decide what y'all do, do? We say we go in. We, the you say we. Paid about five months ago. Now you see the problem. Now you right. You on the right track. You say. No, I just want. I just want. I just want to give the people some some encouragement. You say you and him. That means you decided again to get together. See, it takes one or two people to do some things together. You understand? That's what I'm talking about. That kind of encouragement I'm trying to give people. Go ahead, Spark. Yeah. See, we decided after after all the months waiting on the truck to start. They start. They stop. They start. They stop. Then on top of that. They got some illegal um, Haitians down there build houses on the government farmland area. Mm -hmm. They say they can't complete the road because these illegal houses in the way of the road, the access road. So we decided we'd get um, those tractor on my property, property 63 and 64, uh -huh. sit it on there and clean up my two acres. My neighbor next to me called me this evening and said, Sparky, your land looking good. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. It looks like it's nearly clear on two yeah. acres, okay? Nah, you... My man and me, we decided on Tuesday, we can take my daughter who came in from Orlando. Our, our, our Orlando. Mm -hmm. We go in on there. We can take pictures of the tractor starting up. Yeah. And we send it on WhatsApp. Yeah. And everybody called me and say, Sparky, congratulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. at least you're starting. Uh, oh, see, listen, you see, what, that's the same, hold on, you see, what, that's, hold on now, see, I said the same we thing, I mean, yes, yes, sir, that we start, not, them are the farmers who win, uh, what, uh, what happened to them, what happened to them, you know, right there, wait, uh, oh, 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 now you're getting it, buddy, I'm on a roll, you're on a roll, you feel good, eh, you, you feel good, eh, look, I feel good, because I done got the plant. <laughs> started in my yard. Okay. Then I start next month, yes, I sir. can start putting down trees. Okay, down there. then. Okay. But I know they can teach my fruit. But <laughs> they have a good day. <laughs> okay, Sparky. Thank you. Thank you very much. And 
like I was saying, you got to start somewhere. Yes, you need resources. I, I agree on everything you talk about going on. It's going to be very expensive and stuff like that. But let me give you a word of advice. Listen, take a leap of faith. All right? Take a leap of faith. All right? Trust me. Take a leap of faith. Valentino Brown, me. I ain't working about 30 years. I work in the community, do community work. But I've never had a nine to five, not one day in my life. But yet still, I'm able to struggle for the last 15, 20 years and I'm working on my restaurant. I might come on the show. And I scrap and scrap and scrap and scrap and scrap and stop for a year, stop for two years. And you had no, no income coming in. And I continue. Now I'm most finished. Now I've spent close to two, probably $300,000 on my establishment because I messed up some spots and I didn't repair it and do all that stuff. But now when I go and I walk around, I'm, always, I'm, I'm almost finished accomplishing my goal. Right? Now I'm going to be able to have a restaurant where I can earn an honest living. And I might, in a, in a week time, get hire about three people. And I can make myself anywhere from between fifteen to two to three thousand dollars a week for myself. I feel good about that. And I had to start. Now I had no money. I had no money besides what I hustling with on the streets. All right. So that's what I'm talking about. Many of you who live in here, yes, like Sparky said, there's no light and access road. But take a leap of faith. You understand? Someone on the island here. Yeah, Tractor. Someone you start to talk to when when you start to say I'm gonna build a quarter chair, or I'm gonna build a gas station, or I'm gonna build a convenience store here, yeah, or I'm gonna build a little a launch. Then someone's gonna come on the side of you. Okay? Because NASA wasn't developed uh one time. Someone come up the right and just build something. And then someone say, you know what, I wanna invest too. And they start to build. And then they start to work together. And then things start to build and build and build and build and build and build and build. But you remember the private pirates was young. No structure was young. Before that, uh, our ancestors was young. Before Christ Christopher Columbus came here and said he discovered it. And when they were here, they made huts. But there was no buildings, but huts was young. So you, and they had no money. Did the Awaks had money? Hmm? Huh? That the people who live the old way had money. Hmm? Did Abraham had money? I know he, he had cattle and sheep and goat, which was money. And he used that to trade. And if money was run, you would use that to get money. But they had no money. Money and everything. You gotta understand that if you believe in the father and you go. And you start something or nothing. It's not going to be easy. Nothing in life is easy. Nothing in life is easy. You think Brave get to be Prime Minister just like that? Do you think Hubert Ingram get to be Prime Minister just like that? Do you think the Commissioner of Police get to be Prime Minister just like that? Huh? Do you think you get to be uh, Dwight Scrawn, uh, Chairman at Guardian Radio just like that? You wake your way up. Do you think Bamboo Shark Muna? Missy Lane Pinder, get Bamboo Shark, different location in the Bahamas in the U.S., just like that. You know? They take a leap of faith. Beauty Bakery was one small bakery out there on Market Street. Now that's a multi million dollar business. Huh? Money ain't everything. There's other resources that would come to you. If you see a vision and go at it. So I'm encouraging you guys. This Bahamas, this Nassau, like Sparky stated, is the capital, the financial sector. Where this financial sector cannot sustain the population that is in the, currently in the Bahamas now. With illegal immigrants here who are coming on the sloops illegally. Everyone else is Bahamians. Okay, money going out to uh, the money is collected, millions that is made downtown from the 6.6 .6 million businesses that come to our shore. 
Canada and the U.S. cares out millions of dollars because they don't want their U.S. dollars uh, floating around in the inner city community. The only American money you see coming in the hands of Bahamians are from the taxi drivers, the McDonald workers, uh, those who work downtown and have close connection with the tourists, you know. If a taxi driver carried a tourist, they'd either use a credit card or they'd give him American money. When he puts that money in his pocket and when he leave in from downtown, he would go and stop to the Chinese or he'd go stop to a little convenience store. And that's how the American money is get in the rotation over the hill. Or the maids and stuff like that who get tipped from the tourists or those who work on a cruise ship and bread in here. And when they make the American money or the horse and carriage guys and when they make their money, you know, they bring it over and they spend different sports. You don't think the Bahamas is supposed to have in any city community, we're supposed to have more American money than Bahamian money. You understand? That's why we're seeing so much uh, poverty in the country. Because we're not tapping in, into the number one business in the country. And that's tourism. You understand? Just like talk about the trades. And this is why I'm going to say that. Unemployment in this country is the way it is because we cannot find a way to produce business and small jobs. Listen why. Look at Bay Street people. Bay Street is only about 200 steps away from Grandstand, from Mason Edition. Come down the steps, go up 66 steps, Come down 66 steps, you go on to the next steps of 55. There are four steps uh, on top of Fort Wayne Castle. And there are four steps that take you down to Mason Edition. Okay? They were designed for the workers who would work closer to downtown. Uh, they would use those steps. And then they used 66 steps to go down to Beige Creek. And then a lot of people would have their stalls. Those steps were designed. Uh, to let the tourists come down in any city community to spend American dollars. Do you know how many different business aspects the tourism market that we don't even benefit from? We don't benefit from the breeding. We don't, bread, we don't benefit from the near technician. We don't benefit from the, the various different uh, items that could be sold in, 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 in small stores that the tourists, when they're coming over the hill, they want to buy like coconut water or conch salad or, or anything behemoth or fennec, you know, steamed fish and all this stuff. You know, all these is ways to be innovative for the market because you have a volume of 6.6 .6 million people and we estimated to go, upon, to go about 8.7 million. If we could get a lot of small business to focus and develop the community to have uh, a tourist mind thinking on how we could get them to spend American dollars in the hands of Bahamians in any city community. We would have unemployment down this country within 10 years. We would see a complete change around from the aspect of the people thinking into being into from being violent to being into creativity, building basket and seeing that they could build basket and make hundreds of dollars because they have a volume of people coming in the community because you, a business is not going to be successful unless you have a volume of customers. With the volume of guests that comes to our shores every year, we have that. We have the volume of custom. We just need the Development in the industry communities. We need the mindset of the small businesses to be taught in the schools, to be taught in the industry community and help people construct, give funds to construct their small businesses in the industry community. And we target the tourists when they come in the community, and that money will trickle down all the way to South Beach. We're going to take this call. Go ahead, caller. You're on inside the inner city on Garden Radio. Bless you, Scoochie Brown. Bless, bless. Yeah, uh, I like the topic, right? But, you know, of course... Employment is just a little enjoyment. Mm. Uh, it's only designed for survival, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically the crumbs, right? 
Mm-hmm. So you and I know you, you should be well read. You have to realize what regulations are. In the U.S., in our country, and other countries, regulators, the Food and Drug Administration, the Federal Trade Commission, whatever they are. Talk about it. Most people don't understand regulations are designed to take away your freedoms and let the government make decisions for you. Mm. So it's, it's, it, uh, as, as time goes by, they have, they have made it harder and harder to get rich. Mm-hmm. All right, notice our, our post scandemic the inflation is, it, it isn't going down, right? You see the prices, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see the prices, Scooby. Yes. So, you, know, you, you got people. See, you know, the inflation. On, on one, I saw an article pop up where it's uh, stagflation or inflation. And this guy said something very scary, but I didn't delve into it. I, I saw it in call line. You know, he, he said they're ready uh, to make the banks insolvent. You know, so, you know, these are some scary times in, in, in the world when you look at it. But the Negro, like me, right, personally, right, I, I you know, I do a little poetry thing, right? There's money in it, you know, Scooby. But I'm not able to have too many employees because, you know, I, I trust the young people are not interested in it. And artificial intelligence wouldn't be able to do a policy school. Mm-hmm. People would look down at what you do, right? But if you really was to try to do professional school, you do car seats and things, too, you know. Okay. Be yeah, any kind of, listen to me. People would try to look down at what you do, but they never know how difficult it is to do it, you know, professional mm-hmm. working. But what I'm saying is I decided that. All right, I had a little idea, you know, like I see if I could buy stuff from the states and sell them, like whole supposedly supplies, mm-hmm. uh, the tools, etc. Because I, I see, like in this country, right, the quality of staple guns that they're selling is so pathetic, right? Mm-hmm. Until I almost walk back into the establishment and throw it on the ground after they didn't want to exchange it, I used it for like a couple of, I fired a couple of times and it started giving me problems. I thought, I thought, I called the the, 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 the people in who mm-hmm. like up in the company. I said, man, you know, this year is a disgrace. You know, this year is the worst stable gun in the world. My mom had a stable gun made in Germany. The gun is about 20-something years old, right? Mm-hmm. And it still works. All you do is get a kit fit. It never goes bad. I could always fix it. Where come it from works. Germany? Yeah, it's from Germany. Yeah, you know, they, anything they build uh, lasts forever. They That's put the flexion. But, but, but yet we still say we have a quality and standards bureau, but, uh, you know, the political structure is this, The world is designed to keep people limited. Scrutiny. That's what I'm saying. Is, I understand. So of course, uh, Brave got to go. But she and Kian come, right? <laughs> right? But, I mean, I look at it like... Cuz, let me ask you a question. I ain't cut you up. Cuz, let me ask you a question, man. Listen. What? Yeah. So, uh, when the old man who was shouting, no disrespect there, how oh, he sad to you? He sounded he's drunk. <laughs> I'll say it for my man. 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 Let me get, get, get off, man. Cuz, man. Say it for my man. Let me get off. <laughs> I, 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 I don't have too much zeal because, you know, I, I know the legacy of politics. Okay, okay. And I was wondering, maybe you could answer this. Because go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Why are Bahamian people so engrossed? I mean, the grassroots. Why, I mean, and basically some people, you know, this question is very easy to answer. You know. Why are people so engrossed and pacified and absorbed with politics when it really doesn't benefit us as a collective? It benefits a few individuals who are very fanatical well, when it comes to their party, right? Some people living Forget in the matrix. The country. Hey? You understand what I'm saying? Is they could be on the ship, the ship could be here to the ten. And they ain't wearing nobody else. Saying, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And they ain't wearing nobody else. Yeah, like you know, I mean, I like to see you struggling to do what you got to do. But Scooby, you know what I know. That's what I tell my big brother. Go ahead. Even if he's doing some things, he's fixing up the ones there. Now he order some roof and material, way, way, way. But and then he's, you know, he, he rushing. I say, but you know, you know health come first. You got to pay this money here for this health, for this and that. Mm-hmm. I say, man, everything is piecemeal. You don't go. Uh, you understand? One step at a time. You see, they saying, but. I want to, this year, I say this, I want to start selling the policy supplies and materials because the people, them, they're killing you with the prices and in post-pandemic, ain't nothing going down. So yeah. I find a way to economize, reuse certain things, even the quality of the products. You know, the, and the, the poetry is real good they, because... The tax that you uh, make... The, the so, because, let me ask them. Let me ask them, because, just yeah. say, you know them old chair, I see people show the old chair out, right? Yeah. Uh, but the, the words, the, the frame is still there. You 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 ch- you fix them just like brand new again. Yeah, man. Yeah, you just buy you just buy the form, mm-hmm. you buy the dark one. What so, you do is you lift up the chair. All right. You lift up the chair. You look at the frame and the structure. Okay. Sometimes the, the wood is high quality, uh-huh. and then sometimes it's pressed wood from China. So once it's pressed wood, pressed wood from China or America, I, I, it ain't no more good because of what you understand what I'm saying. But when okay. I when I lift them up and I see see the older ones, that's what mm-hmm. I. But, but only the rich people really just call me. To, to, to keep their furniture because they know the value of it. Yeah. They know they're, done, they're not making so they don't know the garbage. high quality wood anymore. Yeah. I've seen some wood so so hard until you got to screw 
in and take the screw out with the drill and carry it back in a couple of times just to get it to sink. Yeah. Like them red wooden thing, you know. So it's, everything is everything is quality. There's nothing in the world is the same. Everything is being done economy wise. Even the yeah. leather, the material, the tack strip that they use, they're so thin. They must China got to be making them. <laughs> they, they're so inferior. Yeah. And tell it's pathetic. You know, when you live a certain age, you could see the changes in things and uh, in, in, in quality. You know what I mean, Scorsese? You don't think so? You could yeah. see the difference yeah, in the yeah. quality. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you. You, you might as well head it down a dark path, Scoochie. Mm. And so it's going to be harder for us to make money. And not make money, but to get rich. Yeah. Like, or really, really excel. Uh, you know, uh, they have all kinds, even post slavery, America uh, and all over the world, they invented what they call Jim Crow laws. But yeah. the Jim Crow laws are multifaceted, even on the financial, the banking yeah. side, where there was discrimination in the banking system, mm -hmm. the housing. It was all, it was multifaceted. It was so multifaceted. <laughs> Until the average Negro couldn't even face uh, fathom what was going on. It was the, you didn't send the buses to pick up the children from the school. So what happened? It's, uh, it's the same thing in the Bahamas. How, uh, it's the same thing. So talk about the stuff, what happened in Jim Crow, and see if they affect us. They go ahead and talk. Yeah, it's, I, it's, but it's go a ahead. new Jim Crow. It's a new Jim Crow. Yeah, it's a new Jim Crow, you see? Mm. And, and, and that's what's going on right now. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But anyhow, just take care, my bless Okay, yeah. bless up. All right, and remember now, I'd be coming to your store to get my tables and chairs uh, for my restaurant uh, in December, Godspell Life. I am thankful, you know, for the people who assist me. And I was glad that I continue not to give up because, you know, it's very difficult. And like I said, I ain't work for 30 years, but I work in the community very, very hard. But I never had a nine to five because I can't take people's bullshit. Honestly speaking, I can't work for nobody and tell me this and tell me that. And I wake in hard. No, 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 no. So for all y'all who don't want to wake, you wake. But let me give you give a thing. I don't want to be talking to me 20 years, 30 years on the job. No, I won't be waking for, if I just say if I was to ever wake, which I'm going to wake in my restaurant. I come right now, call out. I would wake to any company and give it my all for about 10 years, 15 years. If I were to Kentucky, I'd have been waking up for 10 years. But in the meantime, I would have been building my own uh, Duplicate Kentucky, eh? Bring in everything. You know, if I have to steal the ingredients, I can steal that and run my community where I live. I sell in the cheapest, best fry Kentucky. And then when the boss find out I didn't get ready in my pants, he could kiss me here because I get my own business. What do you say? <laughs> so if you work at McDonald's, that's what you do. Learn. You work in the Burger King, learn how to fry the burgers and stuff, and you know, try do something home. You know, save some of your money and go invest it in these little small business. You could do certain things, people. You know. Let me take the call. Go ahead, caller. Uh, pleasant good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Good evening to you. Yeah, I heard you talking about um, the American the American money trickling down to the inner city and blah blah blah. Right? Yes, sir. But I want you to know that, you know, back in the day, you had like 4 million tours, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But the thing, what I see is going on, because I, I work downtown, too. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, from Bill Gates, Sammy, they're trying to get a cashless society. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's more pre uh, prevalent now that most tours who come... They only come with credit cards, and so it don't really trickle down. Most of them don't even mm -hmm. want to drive a taxi because they don't have no, no cash money. Yes, sir. You understand? You got you got you got a phantom that in your, in your. In your yeah, I mentioned. Your, I mentioned it. I mentioned it. I mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, people don't understand. You have a lot of tools come here, but they don't have no money. No, they use credit they cards and no et cetera. People say they broke. They ain't broke. No, they have debit they cards. They don't have no cash money. They debit cards. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what they're running on. And it's even going to get worse. So um, It's going to get worse. Yeah, yes, yeah, because we, we, either we digitize and see what we could do, have our own portable uh, credit card machine, or you know, we, we gotta do something. Or we can come by right now, eat. right now, right now, it's even hard for for waitress to get tip. What do we do? How they can get tip? Yeah, you know, they just gotta rely on 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 on, on what they call it commission aid, commission. Yeah, right. And but see, that's a problem. That's yes, gonna sir. be a problem. Yes, sir. I agree. Yes, and sir. We, we we're not we're not we're not educating the tourists to come here to say, hey, look here. Make sure bring something to go 
to the ATM to yeah. get some money. Yeah. To pay yeah. the car drivers to tip the people. Yes, sir. The yes, sir. drivers. You know the horse yes, and carriage sir. voice that ain't got no credit card machine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understand? So, or oh, even though they won't go on the horse and carriage, they ain't gonna do it. Yes, I understand. Yes, sir. You make good sense. Yeah, we got we got keep that, keep that, keep that, keep that in our mind. We got to have a conversation. And, and we can do with to upgrade that. with the information. Uh, we, yeah. Regarding our tourists coming to the country, and also we have to upgrade the citizens to be able to deal with the fact that we're yeah. going cashless. Yeah, because uh, next five years, hey, we can be in trouble if we ain't get that technology, man. Boy, more robbing and killing going on now, eh? You know what that means, eh? What? Yeah. People got to pull a gun on you and take it here. You, 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 you. What? Yeah. That's what it means? Because you know the cash in your pocket? I say, well, Boy, I say, see, see, if you don't get this crime under the control. Go ahead, sir. If a nigga come to rob you and all you get is credit card. You in trouble? You a dead man. You in trouble because nigga you belly bubbling. Man. You think you he into you? Understand? You think because he can be in the... You come and go to all this... What? All this but money. go to teller and all that? What? Why you put more hot corn in you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, Let's sir. Up, man. Thank you very much for two. Just as serious as this. And especially like I tell you before... If we're not empowering people, we're not giving them land, we're not teaching them trades in school, we're not, we're not, we're not giving them uh, opportunities to become small business owners. Those guys, like that 12-year-old sleeping in the car, who's going to, to rebel? Who's not going to have a connection to have no debit card? Who, who ain't going to have no access to no cash? They're just relying on their human instinct. To, and uh, and that, is a, that is a gun. You understand? Those guys are going to be 10 times more dangerous and deadlier because, you know, they're more desperate and you ain't getting no cash. That's why what I'm saying is very important. We have to invest in our kids. We have to find a way on how we can educate the next generation. The fact that we're going cashless, what we're going to do, we're going to encourage them to get the proper education, what procedure, how to get your debit card, how to get your passport, you know, how to use the uh, money transfer and all this stuff. It's crazy. Go ahead, caller. You're on inside the inner city. Caller, you there? I guess they, they left. Yeah. And I just want to encourage Bahamans. Listen, man. This Bahamas can't deal with all of us, okay? Can't deal with all of us, y'all. Yes, this is the financial sector. This is the old way of thinking. You understand? And your skin be developed. Okay? Free port. Done developed, but just need maintenance and some new creative ideas. But Andres can be developed. Cat Island can be developed, which is getting developed. Don't you see what Chester Cooper is doing? Don't you see what Brave Davis is doing? Now they have the money, Sparky have the Greek. And they have the power. Because no one can stop uh, the prime minister. And the deputy prime minister. They have access to all the ministries. They ain't no junior minister who have to go if he wanted the light to get turned on the Hay Street Park. He have the right to minister. He have the right to the, to the minister of public works. He has no power. You know. Yeah. So I don't encourage people. Manasseh is too small, and everything Sparky said, you know, like it's expensive and, but, people got the way to get it now. You know. Some of you got tractors, and y'all could wait to get and start building a little, build your own subdivision. Y'all just sparky say, you know, he gone and decide to, him and his friend, waiting on government, no show. So they decide to go get their tractor, blah, 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 you know. But sparky also put in for his grand land. So sparky, even you start off with nothing because you had the sense and the desire to say, hey, they gave him a grand land. You hear about it? You ain't get lazy and say, oh, I ain't into that. Huh? You say, I going to check it out. Because if it's crying on, let me go apply. And you going to apply and you get approved. You get approved. You, you, you get it because you had the audacity and the common sense. You know? And the importance of knowing what that land could be for you. You ain't like the rest of us. Oh, oh I, get all this, I get this land here and I get this house here. Huh? I could do something with it. Never do nothing with it and you're still paying rent. Why some are so stupid? Some people get hosts and paying rent. Huh? Why? And we have brothers and sisters who have hoses and they don't like one another. And before the minute, the souls would be down. That's how we go. The souls would be down. And it's yard. Dirty. 
So now I want it all. Nephew is all. Cousin, see it, you know, when he decided to go clean it up. Boy, when he go there and he started cleaning up, you would see this uncle, this auntie who you ain't seen in 20 years when you been here. Well, what you doing here? This is you, hon. I was just coming to do this. You was never going to do a crop shit. Excuse my language. The only any time you make a move, whether it's your family member to go do something, why be so niggly? Huh? Why you think all the Chinese them making all the money in the industry to give me I know they disrespect the Haitian people. And the Haitian people get all the breakfast stand and all the bar, the Jamaicans get all the barber shops, all the small businesses owned by Haitian nationals and all Bahamians, yeah. But people who came from uh, some uh, not illegal immigrants, some just, you know, got here yeah, through their paperwork by the Ministry of Immigration got sort out. Then, you know, some did the whatever. But all the businesses now, huh? I know we, no disrespect to them. It's a plus to them. It's for us. Because we too niggly being in politics. You, you see it. Pray, God, God. Pray, God. Why you pray being feeding you so long? So all the little contract you and your family, the members, them getting there. Who you all talking to, you want to know. Talking about, pray, God, God. Pray, God, God. Pray, God. My son, you look like you're ready to dead. You understand? Because why? Shane Gibson. That's us. That just, that just, us, bro. You know? When you talk about the black crab syndrome, but we need to look, we look when Michael does look at the man in the mirror. That's why I mean. I don't hate nobody. I love everyone. If you have a problem with me, that's your business. I still could do me. Huh? Listen to me. I had I had my ex girlfriend. Two of them stand by me after they break up. And we break up, right? And I never break over them. I just stop talking to them. And in a year time, I'd hear a call. We still talk, you know. I keep a relationship with them because I don't hate people. You know, if things ain't working my way, that don't mean uh, I, have, I have the hate and say bad things, you know. I am a mature guy as a man, and I know that. You can't go around hurting people. Someone hurt me, that don't mean I got to go hurt them, you know. So, they call, uh, I want to talk to you about something. You know, I got my place, you know, and I got a little spare room or two. And they'd say, uh, I have some problem with my landlord, you know, landlord bill run up on me. Uh, I know you get a room now. Uh, you don't mind if I could stay there for one, two, three months. Now, I remember I tell this my ex girl, now I get an ex girl friend now we're talking to and sometimes time she'd come by me so now I have a choice to make she and I she and I need I'm not saying I I I I love her yeah I love her but the love what I have for I separate that I compassionate because I understand she need and she have a little girl or a little boy and if I say no to her because she might feel I hate her. And if I say no to her, and I try and go away with the little boy or the little girl, that on me. Now, I know, I know it's not my responsibility, but it is. Because we are three. And the father tells you, help strangers. You understand? That's our job. So I have a spare room. It ain't serving me no purpose. I can let her stay there for a couple of months and help encourage her and show that, that you can love in different ways. I don't have to love you to have sex with you. I don't love you because you ain't giving me piece of front. I mad or you scheming on me. And it is what it is. Because when you're scheming, you're going to need doing you. So what a sense of me arguing with you when you're doing you. So I gotta do me? But that don't mean I gotta hate you. No. And that's us now. And I learned to mature. I learned to show love, compassion in different ways, love in many different stages. I learned, I learned to care. I learned to have compassion. I learned to understand. You understand? And unless we learn as a country, learn to forgive, not forget, we're not going nowhere. And we need to learn. And like I said, you know, we niggly. 
you know how many houses in this country right now that family members can't get along the minute you go try to do something right there's a problem mm-hmm. and that's how we are okay let me give a prime example I get about four more minutes we had a restaurant what was designed to help empower people and they named the palm tree I was a little boy and this was on the side of Purity Bakery. Just as, just as Purity Bakery was established, the palm tree was established. Both of these establishments started off small, but they, cre- they were able to create millions. The palm tree was owned by Mr. Russell. Okay? Mr. Russell had a future, and I'm not disrespecting the family if they're listening, but I'm telling, you all, I'm telling this to the family. The family is a disgrace when it comes to the legacy of their father. That's how I'm going to say it, quite, quite blank like that. Mr. Russell, I know him when I was a little boy. He said the hamburgers, chicken snack, and the volume of customers that he had coming in Grandstand, which, see where Purity Bakery is, down from Sea Walker, that empty parking lot right in that building. On the side of the empty parking lot, on the side of Purity Bakery, that was the palm tree. That was one of the best fast food restaurants in the country. Making more money than Kentucky. Making more money than McDonald's. You, you listen to me? That's, the customers should be lying up outside for Mr. Russell hamburgers and double burgers and triple burgers. And those burgers were only going up like a dollar, dollar twenty-five, and then they start to increase the price. Okay? Mr. Russell being about 30, 40 years. Uh, I don't know what happened. He fall ill. And he was no longer to continue his, his business. Uh, he ended up passing away. Now, I tell you, this business was making millions. Now, I don't know what happened to the brothers and sisters. They tried waking up, but there was always confusion. One minute, the palm tree opened. The next minute, the palm tree closed. I don't know management. I don't know brother or new cousin or somebody. So this young guy named Valentino, he ended up renting a restaurant, probably from the farm. They know him. He was working there with Mr. Russell. I remember Duke and all these guys out uh, to the palm tree. And then he ended up getting it. Uh, he ended up starting to make some money and you know, paying the family for using the building. But he didn't call it the palm tree. And the man listen, some, some, one of the family members probably got mad. I don't know. And then he ended up leaving from there. And him and his wife ended up going open. The Chinese, now Valentino, leave from that small establishment where he started at the form of palm tree. And he went on to start his own business. Now this guy is a multimillionaire. And I, I, I watch this guy start off from nothing when he go into the palm tree because, you know, he lose all his customers. He's still at the location, but all volume of customers was gone. But he's able to manage it up again. And then when you look, family, must you see that? Oh, you can't make it money. So they go and try it. And when they go and try it, Look at the building now. The building being there now for about 15 years. I say run right down. Huh? That's what has happened. Hmm? It's supposed to respect one another in the family and keep the family business going on. And that's how that's being missed. So uh, I get one more minute, so let me close up the show. And like I said, you know, we need land. We need small businesses, okay? We need trades to be introduced back in school. I'm talking about nail technician, hair technician, barbering, agriculture, fisheries, electronics, phone technician, and many other trades. We need to have in these schools so these kids can learn these trades so that when they come out, they can be productive citizens. Plumbers, okay? In any city communities, we need community centers. You understand? And educational centers. We also need, uh, how I should say, the parks to be uh, with programs from January to December if we want to change what goes on in our country. But to the Minister, to the Minister of Education, Ms. Glenana Martin, I think that you know exactly what needs to be done. And I just want to say to you that don't be surprised you're seeing 12-year-olds in the car. 
what I would like for you to consider is to continue to come up with creative ideas with the food program. Find deep in your heart if you could actually add a curricular system of small trades in the school and see if you can ask them to put small business training in the schools. Okay? So I want to thank my producer. I want to thank Guardian Radio. I want to thank all the callers that call in tonight. You guys gave a wonderful, wonderful contribution tonight. I'm your host, Valentino Brown, host of the talk show Inside In The City that premieres every Friday at 6.30 to 8 p.m. I'll see you next week on Guiding Radio. And enjoy your night and have a wonderful time. Drive safely and see you next week on Guiding Radio, 96.9 FM. Bohemian people I from Nassau, Bahamas, big up Nathan, bro. Boy, I from Nathan, bro. Don't take no back talk, no bribe or no joke. If you find fire, you'll definitely find smoke. Nathan, bro. Boy, I from Nathan, bro.